He's on fire! Continuing with our 90s nostalgia, I am Joe Clay from Workbench, and this week I want to show you guys a little concept I'm calling 3D layering. And that's where we put our settings in a couple of nulls that you can put at the top or bottom or whatever, so you can control a layering. And what do I mean by that? Well, all of these buildings basically point to these layers, and they derive their uh, settings from these layers. So these are kind of control layers that we can use to adjust everything. So if I want to make the foreground like blurrier, for example, you can blur out just the foreground objects. You can do all sorts of things. You have these things moving. You can change like a speed parameter and have an expression that drives that. I'm not going to go into anything that complicated in this tutorial. If you're interested in that, uh, leave a comment or message me or whatever, and uh, perhaps I can do one in the future. So let me show you how this works. Uh, we're gonna take this building right here, which happens to be this one in the background. I'm not gonna go through the entire setup, but I'm gonna show you how to do it basically. So you have to have a layer control. So that's paramount. You can't select any of these layers without having a layer control. So that's your first thing you're gonna put on. Then you're gonna put in any of the effects that you wanna apply. In this case, I have exposure, uh, tint, um, Vegas, which I'll show you what that does in a little bit, because that's kind of another little trick. And then uh, fast blur so that I control the depth. You're gonna probably want those three at least if you're gonna want any sort of uh, like realistic depth. So the next step is then to build your control layer and make sure it has the same things that you need. It doesn't need the layer control because obviously it's not selecting anything else. But you're gonna take your exposure, tint, fast blur, just like I did, put those on there. What's kind of cool about this is that normally you'd pick whip you know, these effects up here, but what we can actually do, it's actually simpler since it's already on here, is that, uh, let's say, for example, we're going to set this one up. Our completed uh, expression is going to look a little bit different than this. It's just because we're going to have the actual name amount to tint instead of three, which is this is a third parameter. Okay, so all you're going to do is open up all the effects that you need to pick whip, and then you are going to pick whip your layer control, put a period in, go back, Pick whip the parameter that you want, amount to tint in this case. I usually put a semicolon just because that's the programmer in me, but you can hit enter. And it'll pick it from the original layer. So now this is using background, so let's go to the background. You can change it here. Say the exposure, I want them darker. Now the whole background goes dark. Every layer that's set to be background. So now all you have to do when you're animating this, you're like, hey, I don't want that to be the background anymore. I want that to be, you know, mid mid ground, right? So there you go, now it's a part of those. So this helps you uh, rearrange all of these layers way quicker than you normally could because then you'd have to go and copy these effects from one to the other, find another one in the background, all that kind of stuff. I made this specifically because of that. I was doing a lot of these kind of things and um, it was a lot easier to just select a layer and pick the thing that you want. So there's one more technique I'd like to show and that was something I, I needed to figure out when I did this. These are all movies because uh, all of this stuff took forever to render so I made a whole custom thing that could make these buildings. And then we wanted to have a stroke go around it. And while that was easy in the original comp, um, I didn't want to go back and re-render those again because it took a while to render these things out. Um, all of these little people are all animated. Like every little person, all of their stuff is animated. There's, you know, hundreds of these guys in this scene. So it was easier just to make all these things into one set of movies. But I wanted to have it stroked. So you can't really put an easy stroke around anything in After Effects like this. However, I looked around, I think I found it on, I think I found the solution in Creative Cow, but if you put the Vegas effect on here and you change the segments to one, you can actually animate a stroke by changing the length, just like you could if you had a shape layer or anything like that. And uh, I mean, well, it's gonna have a round edge, that's pretty much it. I think by default, it comes with this hardness set to like zero or something else. You just gotta make sure all your opacities and all the, like the actual uh, you know hardness and all that stuff are set so that it actually looks like a stroke. And change your rotation so that it starts at a different spot. So just like that. The last thing you need to do is you make sure that this is set to image contours so that way it looks at the alpha of your movie and then strokes around that. I haven't used Vegas for the like Vegas lights effect in forever, but this makes it like amazing. So, uh, you know, definitely use that. Well, that's it. I wish I would have taken the time to like figure this out a long time ago. Uh, sadly, I only like started doing this like this year. But man, it saves so much time if you're gonna do any of these kind of layered stuff. I mean, you could even like have a preset up comp and, and have those, you know, settings already ready to go so that all you gotta do is apply them to new layers that you throw in. So I hope you guys take this one and run with it. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below and uh, we'll see you next time. I'm Joe from Workbench. Thanks for watching. Follow us on workbench.tv. I'll see you guys later. Bye.